What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fye with Eric, my man, Eric Schaefer. We're going to be talking about week nine of the NFL season. Um, it's a very, very early look, so please keep that in mind. We will have updated stuff. I will be doing a show with Goldie. I'll be doing a show with Rody. I'll be doing a show with our other member, uh, John Sketchy One Eaton. And we are going to all be talking through this, this slate. And that's what we're going to try and do going forward is give you guys a different look. Some of it will be projection based. Some of it will be feel based. We're going to talk through, you know, everybody's different plays and, uh, and get them up on the site as well. So keep an eye out for that. And, uh, yeah, so we're looking at it very early. Sheets, uh, any sort of overall thoughts before we just want to jump right into game for game, game by game here? Yeah, I actually have. Um, for me, it's a little more spread out this week than it was last week. Like last yeah. week, I had Miami, then Minnesota, then a whole bunch of other stuff that I didn't really like, um, which I played anyway. And then uh, tonight, I have it's it, today the, at least early look. I have like six teams that kind of stand out for me, but not by all that much. Mm -hmm. So it looks to be kind of an interesting GPP uh, type slate. Yep. I hear you. Um, and I think we're going to let, let's, let's pull up your screen and we'll get into it game by game. Cause I I've got a, I've got a number of teams I'm interested in as well. And I think that you're going to see at least early in the week, we're going to see, you know, pretty spread out ownership compared to, uh, to what we had last week. And in, 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 at least in terms of what I liked and, and, you know, what was crazy about last week with all that and a crazy high scoring week and everything, the chalk still won. You know, oh, by, by, by a lot. Yeah. Like the chalk dominated. And there was a couple of spots where you, you had to play like one extra, you know what I mean? Um, you know, playing like a Camaro would have worked too, I guess, but like on DraftKings, like he was very popular on FanDuel. It just was a massive chalk week. I think we can spread out a little bit this week. And and I, and I, I think we, uh, we get right into it with, you know, the first game, the chargers in Atlanta is what you've got there as the first one. Uh, these, but we, we know how the chargers games just tend to go weird. Right. And this feels like a good spot to, to, to maybe take advantage of them inside of a, in, in a dome. Um, I think this is a really, you know, a really interesting possibility. It's really hard to get projections this early in the week. Um, and, and, and right now I'm, I'm trying to look through it here. Even I can't even get a normal projection, but just from an actual game standpoint, this feels like it could be a good spot to take advantage of the charger passing game. Uh, as well as the running game, even though Atlanta's defense has been a little better than, than people think. Drake London is probably too cheap for this matchup at 4,900. Tough, you know, individual matchup, but but just that we know just the nature of the way the Chargers play, uh, we we just see their their games go wild quite a bit. So that's that's my early look is is that uh, I, I think this is a really interesting game to stack and um not sure exactly who I'm going to be playing yet or who's going to be healthy by, by that time. Um, but you got Pitts uh, on the Atlanta side with, with along with uh, London. And on the other side, I, I really like the, you know, the, the usual suspects, Herbert to Williams or uh, Allen and, and then uh, Eckler at running back. So this is, this is definitely a game that I will, that I will have uh, some exposure to. How about you? Boy, there was any other week, any other week, except for last one that I decide to, as we talked about, take kind of a stand on the Atlanta game and having to put up 70 points. It would have worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. just, just, just not in the line. Highest scoring slate in two years, pretty much. Uh, uh, well, I buried I buried something here. Mike Williams, by the way, should be out. So I, I shouldn't have said Mike Williams. I, I think Keenan Allen and Josh Palmer, we've been mixing in some DeAndre Carter. I, I should have thrown that out there. But Keenan Allen's going to look like a really good play because of that. Sorry, Chiefs. Yeah. Um, presuming that that Allen's in, which I presume, I mean, he only very uninspiring returned to the lineup last week with two targets. Um, yeah. But uh, so I presume that, and I even see Josh Palmer is is you know he didn't play last week either um, due to concussion protocols. I presume will be out of concussion protocols. But well, this is this is uh, they're coming off a bye. Okay, right. Well, it's just, why don't they take the Q tag off then? For Christ's sake! You know I, I don't know. That's that's. But I, I'm just throwing it out there that they're coming yeah. off a bye. Um, so we'll just have to see. Maybe you get to play your uh, Trey, Trey McKitty again, but. Uh, Yep. And, and your, your boy should be back too. Corderell Patterson should be back this week. Well, yeah. So I guess that's why I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of with you. I'm having difficulty getting projections on this game uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to, I'll have to put a, take a pass on this game for now, but you know, hey, you'd like to think it's a good game to target, right? Because the Chargers usually play fast and they're in a dome. So it's a, uh, seems to be a, a game that you want to look at, but unfortunately this early hour, it's kind of difficult. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I, I, th I think right now we, we, we pin that as for me, it's going to be one of my, uh, one of my focused uh, targeted games. Uh, 
don't know if it'll be my favorite, but I, I, I love getting exposure against the chargers every time and, and for the, and to the chargers. So I, uh, the, the games tend to get a little bit weird. And I, again, I love that it's in the dome. So I think this could be a really good spot to attack. All right. Um, what do you got next sheets? Cause all the games start at 10. So I'm looking at, I have Miami Chicago. So I'll just start with that. Yep. Uh, I, even though it's, it's a, yeah, obviously it's a, what do you call it? A pace down matchup, I guess. Miami going from Detroit to Chicago. Uh, I still think that Miami's in play. Uh, I still have them as one of my top six stacks. Um, they just, you know, they got a lot of weapons and know how to use them. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, would I prefer to be playing like, in a dome or at home against, the, you know, whatever, instead of like in Chicago, God knows what the weather's going to be. Who knows what's going to be over there. But um, uh, I still I still think Miami's going to grade out pretty well. And all three main skill position guys between Mostert and um, Hill and and Waddle to go along with two, I think all makes perfect sense. Uh, I don't really see too much coming back on the Chicago side. If I did stack Miami, I'd have to do something. So probably Darnell Mooney would make some sense um, or a Komet maybe. But Mooney seems to, would seem to be the one I would try for. Yeah, um, I, I keep saying it. Uh... I think Justin Fields is going to have a, I mean, he, he, he actually did have a, a, a decent game the other day. Um, two good, I like, I like Miami though. What's that? Yeah. Two good weeks in a row. Fields. Yeah. And he's, he's getting better. Everybody who talked about how much he sucked. I'm just saying like, give the, give the guys who are 21 years old a chance. You know what I mean? And, right. and, and also it'd be nice at some point if you gave him some real, some real weapons, right. but uh, Darnell Mooney looks like a perfect run back to me. If you're going to play the Miami side of things, I uh, like the, uh, like the price. You're getting too much split time from the uh, the running backs for me to have too much interest. But if I'm not going to, you know, fault you if you want to take a shot on on uh, either Herbert or Montgomery, I just am not going to do it while they're splitting things. But it seems like Tua to 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 Waddle Hill uh, with with the Chicago uh, running back with Mooney maybe, and Mooney would be my favorite play there. This isn't my favorite game, but I think it's definitely you know Miami is capable of putting up a ton of points and when they have everybody healthy they just are a really really strong offense and I'm curious what happens with uh you know Mostert after sort of letting people down last week he's still really cheap so I, I I'm gonna probably have some interest in Mostert as well so I, I'm I'm pro- I always every week I, I sort of play play some of Miami and to take some of the opponent every time just because the games tend to you know be very high scoring and fast paced and whatnot so this is uh this week is no different even though it's not the ideal matchup Carolina, Cincinnati, what do you got, Sheets? Despite the fact that, that Cincinnati really had a miserable performance last night, um, they're, they're, they're against Carolina. They're at home. Carolina is missing some some cornerbacks uh, that showed against Atlanta this past week when they gave up 30, you know, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So that was, uh, that was tough. Uh, they've, they've, they've been somewhat feisty since their coach got fired and since they've lost McCaffrey. But, you know, Cincinnati coming off a loss, they're going to be coming back home and they're going to, I think they're going to put up a big number here. Um, so I presume they'll all be popular again with Chase out. Um, so you'll have Higgins and um, I guess who else now they think about it. Tyler Boyd, Burrow quarterback. Mixon is probably going to look good. I have currently have Mixon as the top running back play right now. And then DJ Moore is such a, such an easy run back um, that I think that this, uh, this all makes, uh, this all makes quite a bit of sense. Deontay Foreman had a really, really nice game. Um, he's so really we, good, by the way. Yeah, the guy, the guy can get, dish out some punishment. You know, yeah, he's not, he's not a guy that's going to get passing work, but, but, but he's a guy that can slam it into the line. Uh, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think this game particularly sets up well for him, so I don't think I'm going to go back to him. Uh, I'm going to just probably use Carolina. Anything is just kind of a run back uh, to Cincinnati stacks. Yeah, I'm I'm good with I actually am good with Foreman or uh, DJ Moore um, as a run back if you want to play the Cincinnati side and I, and I agree with you with with the corners out I actually like the Carolina defense a lot but the, with the, you know you see what happens when you lose a couple bodies and all of a sudden you know Atlanta lights you up um, but I, I I mean Cincinnati is always going to be a, a staple for me and I don't care that they had a bad game last night on Monday Night Football um, I would go right back to T Higgins. And uh, Hayden Hurst, I think, would be one of the top tight end plays in the slate. So that's what I'm doing here. Is uh, is I I would I would play it just like that with a, a Burrow to, to either one or both of the receivers with Hurst. I think you can you right. Burrow stacks. You could always could always do it because he'll have those off you know, those weird 450 yard passing games, and then you run it back with either Moore or uh, or Foreman. And Foreman's not getting any ownership early on in the early projections. Not getting wow. any love, but I uh, 
I kind of like the idea of playing him. I just think that he's, you know, uh, Cincinnati's run defense has been okay, but hey, look, Nick Chubb just won you the uh, showdown slate last night. Um, mm-hmm. I can't Deontay Foreman run for a couple touchdowns here at 6K. He seems a little too cheap. So going to have a lot. That's one thing we will have a lot again this week. There's a lot of running backs in that 6K range that are going to be pretty popular, I think, and uh, it all stand out to be pretty good plays. So this is another game that uh, not like I, not like I want to go crazy stacking. I'm not playing two guys from Carolina on the run back, but I think one of Foreman and more with Cincinnati, uh, the Cincinnati passing game is a, is a pretty good idea. And I just want to echo again that I really like Hayden Hurst. And if you have it in you, again, this is really, really early, but so far the top projected defense point per dollar was actually Carolina. Um, so that's uh, just put that out there. Um, Green Bay, Detroit next. So, uh, well, you know, Aaron, Aaron uh, Rogers could, could use a game where he could do something. Um it's uh, it's look, it's been looking pretty, pretty grim. Now, Green Bay, they, I, I was commenting from their last game, they, they, they did literally just enough to like cover the spread in this game. They literally had no interest in winning this game. Apparently, <laughs> they, 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 seriously, they were down like seventeen, and they were just running the ball and this, 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 and just grinding enough, whatever. So, uh, it should be noted that Aaron Jones had twenty attempts for one hundred forty-three yards and. Four receptions and five targets for, well, you would you would think he would get more than twenty two fantasy points for that, but mm-hmm. I guess he had no touchdowns. That's what happens. Um, well, that's un, that's 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 unlucky, I guess. Um, but then again, it's not like Buffalo's Buffalo knows what they're doing. You know, they were up pretty much the whole game. You know, take all the yards you want, bro. You know what I mean? Like we're right. up we're up twenty seven to ten. I'll be more than happy to let Aaron Jones get seventy yards in rushing. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> and score no touchdowns. Um, so in a way, I think that that actually I think that line score might be a little bit fraudulent, actually. So Baron Jones gets gets a lot of lots of a lot of popularity because he is in a better matchup just because he had a big game. Uh, I I'd, I'd, I'd be inclined to fade that for the reasons I just mentioned. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I will say this, that uh, I'm not currently seeing the Green Bay passing game show up in my my early looks here. But I, I will put it to you another way. If they can't put something together in this spot, they have a big problem. Okay. Because Detroit just gives up a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. and, and this is a perfect uh, setup for Green Bay to do something. If they have, if they have, if they have it in them to do it. Um, and I have a feeling that by the end of the week, this is what people are going to want to do. They're going to want to play Aaron Rodgers with, 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 with Romeo Dobbs and maybe Sammy Watkins or whatever against Detroit, run it back with, with 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 Amon St. Brown. Um right now my projections are not getting me to that that build. But again, projections are pretty early. So uh I guess we'll have to we'll have to wait and see because it's it seems logical this is what you want to do, right? I mean you want to play Detroit games in general. And you know, you probably sh- want to play Aaron Jones, you want to play Aaron Rodgers and play the Detroit guys also. I don't know. Projections wise I'm not seeing it. But uh this has got to be a game people are gonna play, right? I think is that I like that over in this game already. Um, it feels like a low, too low of a total for any game played in Detroit, to be honest with you. And uh, it's it's hard to have any faith in the Green Bay passing game with what we've seen so far. But uh, this is the matchup. I mean, right? As, did you ever think that there would be a day where Aaron Rodgers was fifty nine hundred? Like I just didn't think that was possible. I mean, it, and by the way, it may not even be worth that. But I could definitely get to this game um, uh, with you know you you could play. I think Dobbs and, and Watkins, you know, are, are fine. Uh, Watkins is as a shot at value. I, maybe he spent I, probably is wrong, the wrong thing, but he's 3,600. Um, Lazard should be back this week. So any of these guys, I mean, you can get a pretty cheap little stack in and then run it back with St. Brown. They're just splitting way too much of the, of the rushing situation. DeAndre Swift has basically become a, uh, you know, the, the pass catching back and, and Jamal Williams has, has gotten the bulk of the, uh, the carry. So yeah. I'm going to be off the running game for Detroit, but I do like St. Brown. I don't mind doing a stack with golf on the other side either. Um, the, the lions put up points at home, simple as that. And they give up points at home. So this is going to be a game you want to get exposure to. And I think that uh, assuming that Lazard is back, I would play Rogers with Lazard and Dobbs even, and again, run it back with St. Brown or, or golf with, St. Brown and, and either and Ray, probably Raymond and then uh, run it back with either. Oh, you can also use Tanyan in there. Um, 
with the with Dobbs or or Lazard. I, th- I think this is a good game to, to to target, and this could be one of those. Ex- you know, even with the split carries for their for a lot of the season for the backfield for Green Bay, I think you might see a lot a lot of a lot of the running game again um, if Detroit still can't stop it. So Aaron Jones could be a play at seventy four hundred. I, I do like this game quite a bit. Right. Well, we started off with a lot of games that are actually kind of interesting. Usually, it's some duds in there. Um, and then we've got one that I think I'm probably going to be mostly off of coming up next, uh, Vegas and Jacksonville. Vegas get coming off of getting shut out. Um, I, I personally am not on this game outside of maybe a Devontae Adams. I don't know what's happening with Renfro, guys. I, I really don't. I feel like this price is still stands out to be kind of crazy. I actually thought that, that, that with Adams that he would get a lot of the work as a secondary. But ATN and Jacobs, I have both as fine. I actually think ATN is probably – I should probably prioritize him, actually. Um but he's another one of those six K ish running backs, but uh, pretty much ATN and Adams. I don't want to stack and I don't want to use the quarterbacks in this one. How about you? Yeah, I'll talk you into this one. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. First of all, uh, the guy you mentioned before, uh, Etienne, he's good. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's good. And uh, you have Jacksonville coming off just an ugly, I don't want to say ugly loss. It was just a bad, I mean, actually, I thought they played okay, actually, just. It's a bad loss, a couple of bad possessions. I'm sure Brave Jayhawk is not too pleased with that loss. Um, and uh, But yet they still take that game out. I mean, they still play usually pretty fast. And Vegas is coming off, like you said, kind of off a shutout, shutout game where people are expecting to put up points. Um, I don't know. I kind of like this game. Uh, I, I'd like to play Devontae Adams. I would like to play – Etienne, and I would like to try to stack this game up a little bit. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it yet, but I think this is a uh, – I, I don't know. I, I feel that they played this game two or three weeks ago, that this game would would get would get ownership, and I think that people would, would think this is a game of points, and I think that just because of circumstances over the last week or two, um, the teams might get ignored. So we'll um, we'll revisit this later in the week, but I, I think I'll be able to, to con you into playing some of this. Yeah, it's possible. Um yeah, I think Kirk and Kirk is also reasonable along with the uh, the ATN play. Um, I, I mean, Jacobs is probably going to get some ownership again. Yeah, I, I'm okay with it. I, I don't. I, I just don't particularly have interest in the quarterbacks here. But uh, I, I guess I guess I don't. I don't have a problem with it. I just don't want to be into every single game. You know. Like, no, really- I, what I was going to say is keep in mind it's a crap. It's a crappy slate. You know what I mean? Well, we've, like- we've mentioned a bunch of games that are pretty interesting so far. I think. The Miami thing, I think the Green oh, Bay Detroit, I think yeah. the Chargers Atlanta is all good games, but okay. I guess Cincinnati see. also, I suppose. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the other, on the yeah. other hand, uh, Indianapolis, New England. Uh, I will say that I like Ramondre Stevenson, and that's pretty much all I got from this game. Uh, same here. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm good with Ramondre Stevenson. I don't think that it's by any means like a must. There's all he's one of those other six K running backs. It's that's what that's what the builds are going to look like. There's going to be six K running backs everywhere, which means some of these guys are going to be low owned. Ramondre probably won't be one of them, and I think he's really good. So uh, uh, that's pretty much uh, all I've got in, in this one, and I I just can't quite get to anything on the Indiana side. Um, well, you can but, just play the set. You can play the Patriots defense. I mean, if you feel like it. I mean, but... It's just we always talk about it, but we, it's really hard to end up finding yourself spending forty one hundred for a defense or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, certainly the Patriots' defense looks like a good play. Um, although I have to say, actually watching the Ellinger play made him like he looked better than his stats were. Just throwing that. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, let's move over to uh, Buffalo and the Jets. Um, Sheets, I'm guessing this is one of the games that you got to have a little bit of interest in, right? Was it's Buffalo? We we have to play Buffalo when they. I mean, they just put up a million points every week. I guess. No. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a guess. It's like annoying. But uh, sure. You play. You play Allen. You play Diggs. You play uh, Garrett Wilson. Run back. Right. Yep. Um, and uh, throw in another Buffalo guy, and 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 you're off to the races. Yeah. I'm, hey, it's like, you're right. Sometimes what's it? The Ocam's razor. Sometimes the simplest, uh, simplest answer is the correct one. Sure. Let's uh, let's put that in and see what that looks like. So Josh Allen, then we got Diggs. Want to give me another wide receiver, maybe? Um, all right, let's let's go let's go off the board. We'll go Shakira for a second one, and then we'll come back with Garrett Wilson and uh, and there you go. Yeah, yeah you are you are correct. <laughs> um, the, the weather here has been pretty decent, by the way. So you're not going to get like, really like bad weather or anything like that. 
I mean, I would say also that I do think I do think the Jets are weirdly live in this game. I do too. Uh, uh, and that that could keep that that could keep Allen having to put his foot on the gas. But I think the reason this game could be competitive is not because the Jets will be able to put up a zillion points. I think the Jets will be able to, I don't want to say hold the Bills, but I feel they'll be able to contain the Bills to at least a reasonable number, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I guess it was more just like a spread call than anything else. I don't think, I don't think you get 28, nothing Bills and then, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. I think, I think this is going to be a game for, for most of the game. Mm -hmm. um, so again, Allen digs, I just threw Shakira just for no reason. I mean, you could play Gabe Davis, obviously, or Dawson Knox. Those are probably the better plays. Um, but Garrett Wilson's obviously, you know, he's coming into his own. He's apparently the clear one run back for the Jets. Yeah, I agree. Tough matchup uh, against those Bills corners, but the yeah. Bills put a point, so somebody's going to have to get the ball. Uh, yeah. But I, I, I mean, this is, you know, we have also Corey Davis questionable. I don't know if he'll be back. Elijah Moore just never gets targeted. He actually just said that in a little interview, so wouldn't be surprised if, something's going to happen there. Either they're going to try to focus more on him or get rid of him at some point or something like that. I've got, um, I've got, I've got a bit of news just came across. What's that? Good game. Steve Nash. Oh my God. Wow. Yeah. Steve wow, they Nash. Did it early and they did it on the front of the second of a back-to-back. -back. That's pretty. Brooklyn and Steve Nash mutually LOL agreed to part ways. Wow. Okay. okay. Well, we knew it was probably going to happen at some point. Yeah. Um, be interesting right. to see. We'll, we'll talk about that. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that one for the for, for the yeah. new stuff. But um, wow, that is pretty interesting. Uh, but but yeah, I think that Buffalo. You know, you said it. You you play the 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 low owned for for this week. Allen to Diggs or to uh to you know big game Gabe Davis, and uh, one of those guys with Knox at thirty five hundred is a great play. I think it's way too cheap. Run it back with Wilson, and then it might be the week where we consider using James Robinson if they. They don't seem to have any faith in Carter, even as he put up numbers last year. They were very quick to turn it over his job, partly because they, they had a really a real stud over there. And unfortunately, he got hurt in Brees Hall. Um, but they picked up James Robinson. And I'm just curious how they're going to use him. This is week two with him. Maybe you could use him as a run back at 5,400. He's a little cheaper than these other running backs and maybe able to get you off, off of some of the chalk. Maybe it's a week too soon, but I would take it. I would, I would consider taking that shot. All right. Um, Minnesota, Washington. Yeah, I, I currently have Minnesota as the top stack. I can't imagine why. Um, they always look well, like it, right? It feels like well, they, they always, always look like it, but they have because they have like you know exactly who you want to play, right? I mean, right, he, right. Uh, but I see Thielen with a little bit of a Q tag on him. Uh, he's doing okay, all right. So, so you have Thielen, Jefferson. You know, I, I agree. I agree with your assessment, of Cousins. By the way, I, I heard a little bit of that. He sucks. <laughs> and this, they, meanwhile, this team is like is like is, what are they seven, six and one, seven and one? He's six and one. I have them plus thirty to one to win the Super Bowl. Actually, I know and st we still don't think he's good. <laughs> like no, but you know what he is? Someone called him right. Somebody, he's a, he's our front runner. You know, he'll, he'll play well against the against the bad yeah. teams. You know, yeah. um, and this could be one of them. But um, I don't know. Washington's feisty. You know what I mean? Like I don't think it's such a great easy spot for Minnesota going into Washington like that. Um, uh, is this any better than Miami going into Chicago? Uh, I, I think I prefer Miami if you want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, uh, I think you're finally seeing, by the way, uh, what's his name emerge again. I mean, finally, is uh, Terry McLaurin's had a good game, I think. Um, so if you do want to stack Minnesota, you can play Terry McLaurin. I'm not going to go with Taylor Heineke on that side of the ball or anything like that. And I, I guess I imagine that that Dalvin Cook's got to be okay, an okay play. Um, I don't know what happened with the Antonio Gibson or, you know, that whole thing. Um, he, Hey, look at this though. 20 fantasy points. That, that's, that's, see, this is what we counted on the whole year, right? Antonio Gibson to not get any rushes, but be seven targets, <laughs> three or seven receptions right. and seven targets. And of that's course. what they're using him as now is he's, he's basically become their pass catching back. Amazing. You know um, what? Maybe you should play him. How about that? Maybe you should just play him. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's much different than the James Robinson play, but I, they they definitely are not siding with him. Like they're no, they, no. They, they they are going towards Robinson, and that was a, they were getting blown out the last game. It's weird, and I, I just feel like it's 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 too split scary for me. But I, I do think that James. I mean, it is cheap for Gibson and the talent, and I like taking guys against Detroit. Um, although they've been decent against the run game, they they've given up points, and I just 
you know, so one of he or McLaurin has a run back to what is, I think, a, a pretty decent stack for Minnesota. I just don't think I really want to play Cousins um, personally. I think I would take just – I think I just like – I like all three receivers, to be honest with you. I think that – I think even Osborne is standing out as, as a potential long shot play at 4,200 um, just because they're looking for him more. And he's missed – he's had some air yards that he hasn't had some catches on and, and some big plays they've gone for. So I like all the receivers, but Jefferson is clearly the guy you want to get to. Jefferson and McLaurin, two of the best receivers in the league. So I, I think those two make a nice, uh, nice little duo here. And let's 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 talk through this a second. So so in this past game, Brian Robinson only had eight rushing attempts. Well, they so, were getting killed. I don't think we should be looking what, like. What do you mean they lost? They they won by a point. Uh, no, no, I know. Sorry, sorry. They weren't getting killed. They were having. It was just an ugly. Washington hasn't gotten killed all year. Slog you know? game. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. My point is that I mean, you have, like two games ago, Robinson had 20, 20 rushes. Didn't they come back to win? I, I forgot. Was wasn't it like a sixteen to three game in the fourth quarter? Oh, t- weird t- game. No, it was, oh. I don't know. No, because I remember that was I was sweating that one. That was that was what's his name's other play. He was not nail biting oh. the whole game. Um uh so uh yeah, so I don't know, maybe is it is it possible that it's fine that 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 it's finally Gibson season? I mean, he he went from giving up 20 rushes to the other guy to then was like split in the backfield and he got every one of the targets. I don't know. I'm, I'm, again, this is early, so I don't have to commit to anything. Mm-hmm. But you get a no-owned Antonio Gibson. I don't know. All right, mm-hmm. I'll, we'll, we'll, re- we'll revisit. I, I'm interested in this. I, I'm, you're, 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 you're appealing to me. I just, I still, I, I just, I don't know. It's just weird to me they don't give the guy the job. I, I really don't understand it. I thought they would be trading him or something. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know. But like, I, um, I, I'm with you. I think that could be a good, a good, fit, a good play, especially if it stays low owned. Um. Maybe you skip the six K guys. You play. You play Antonio Gibson and and uh, James Robinson, and then just see what happens. <laughs> like that's right. Um, all right, Seattle, Arizona. We look at two afternoon games this week. Two, are they going to have an afternoon slate? Even like two gamer? I guess they'll they'll do it. They always do if there's multiple games. But and and they'll fill it. They'll fill it. I'll promise <laughs> you that. Yeah. Um, they'll offer three hundred thousand for first, and they'll fill it somehow. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, I think again, Kenneth Walker is another one of these guys in the six K range that we can use. I think this is a totally fine game to stack. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, Kyler Kyler didn't quite get there for us last week, came close. Um, but I have no problem with with going back to him, and I have no problem with playing Geno to uh, to, to Metcalf or Lockett. Um, I think this is a really good game, and uh, it's, I think, the highest total on the board. So, uh, you, you know, this this might be the one you want to go after. And and and, I, and I'll, I'll take a shot again on – I don't understand why, why Noah Fant's not getting more usage there. But uh, they seem to prefer Disley. Um, I don't know. I, I still feel like at some point Fant is going to have a game and he's cheap. But uh, Walker, Metcalf, Lockett, Hopkins, um, and then Rondell Moore again with a you know just he put, he seemed to put up that one big play every week and uh, had twenty three or has has a chance for one big play every week I should say put up twenty three fantasy points last week. I, I like this game quite a bit, so I, I would uh, I would definitely be I'll definitely be uh, overweight on this one. Yeah, this was another one. And on another slave, remember I was talking up Hopkins and whatever, and I played both Hopkins and Rondell Moore in the Wildcat. Mm-hmm. And and I like basically min cash. I mean, how does that happen? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's uh uh they both went freaking off pretty much. Um yep. anyway, so I think this slate it's a little little better for them, uh, if they if they happen to go off. And I mean look at Hopkins. I mean, the guy has a hundred freaking targets and 12 out of 13, like complete, which is kind of ridiculous, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and a touchdown. And and I think they go right back to it. I mean, whatever. So I, I like that a lot. And like you said, um, Metcalf and Lockett, you know, Metcalf hopefully is a little more, um, is a little healthier than he was last week. And even last week, he got 10 targets, you know? Yeah. Um, I didn't even think he was going to play. And he ended up playing probably hurt. People were wondering if he was going to be a decoy and getting 10 targets. So, He'll be back. Um, so this is, I think, is a perfectly good game to to, to go after. Um, I don't know whether you prefer Gino or or Kyler. I don't think there's much of a difference. If you want to know the truth? I mean, uh, well, so Kyler's like ceiling I think is much higher, but just because the right potential rushing upside. Um, Gino Gino's had some decent rushing games uh, too. In all fairness, this year as well. But that was. But if you're, you're going to play them with like two other receivers, I think it's like very similar. You know. Yeah. 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 Play. Yeah, I think I, th- I think I, w- I think I would take shots on both sides of this one. This definitely seems like the most logical game, and I'm going to guess the ownership will follow. Um, 
but I love that. I love Hopkins and then getting one of the receivers or Walker from Seattle, just as a, even if I'm not stacking the game, just, just doing that, that one thing, I think I'll, I'll have in a lot of lineups. So, so this next game is a game that at the beginning of the year, people were saying this could be the NFC championship game. Now it could be both teams not making the playoffs. Who the hell yeah. knows? Um, it's going to be a loser uh, go match. <laughs> right. So, so this game, what, what's it going to be? Is it going to be seven, six, or is it going to be 35, 30? I mean, I, re- I really see both, both variations. I really do. I actually, just for, for better or worse, I do have the Rams as uh, as my third top team to play. But the thing is, whenever you have Cooper Cup, like, in you know, on the field, he's they're always going to project to have, like, a lot of fantasy points. You know what I mean? Because he does have, a, a, you know, does generate a lot of fantasy points. Um, T- Tyler Higby, again, is going to show up as a good play. Maybe he'll disappoint again as what could be a good play. Um how did I want to follow up with you? How did Van Jefferson end up doing? He didn't do anything. He didn't, oh, he didn't even play. He didn't put up anything. He had zero targets. Yeah, I mean he played, but he didn't. He didn't. Do oh, anything. you know what? Maybe maybe you could play him. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. It's it's. I don't like that they raised his price and he didn't do anything. But I still think Al, I would shots. I mean, Allen Robinson looks log- looks logical, right? So, um, and then on the Tampa side. You know, it's also kind of weird is that it's a four o'clock game and this game's not even in, in L.A. It's like a, that's yeah. what it is. There was there were no games scheduled on the West Coast. So they had to jam one, you know, East Coast game at four. No, o'clock. I think I think they would have planned this one out before the season to be the, the afternoon highlight game because they were the conference. Right. They were in the NFC title game last year. Right. Um, so you could go ahead and try the, uh, the Tampa side uh, if you want. Uh, Evans, Godwin, you know, whatever. Um, but I'm, I'm getting to more Rams uh, as far as that goes. And I will say also, which comes no surprise either, that Tampa is also showing up as a good defense. You know, uh, so uh, this is a this is a this could go different ways. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of skill position guys on both sides. You have two teams with a lot of pride, both offensively and defensively. Uh, well, how, what do you think of this game? What do you, what do you want to do here? I don't want to do much of anything, to be honest with you. I don't feel a lot of confidence in the Rams right now. Cooper Cup is probably too cheap at 8,900. That's that stands out to me. Um, I, I honestly think, I mean, we're used to seeing him. He was like 9,600 every week, but you know, it's just a matter of prioritizing your spend ups. Um, uh, Cup at 89 or or Hopkins at 79. I think they're both good plays, but that the and, and then Jefferson at, at uh 86. All of those guys have massive ceilings. I think that I think the ones I feel best about are Cup and uh and Hopkins, but um. Yeah, maybe a flyer on Jefferson, but I don't think I'm going to do it. Um, Godwin would be my preferred target against the Rams because he lines up in the slot more. Uh, if I had to do anything, I think Fournette is probably my favorite play of all of them. Um, the Rams have had just look. Hey, look, 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 look what Christian McCaffrey did last week against the Rams. He had the the, the trifecta, the the throwing, uh, running, and uh, catching a touchdown. Um, so I, Fournette is another one of those six K-ish receivers that or six K-ish running backs that I think are really solid in play. And, and I could see getting weird and making a game stack out of this, but I don't personally love it. Um, it just doesn't, it doesn't excite me. That's where I'm at. I think Godwin is Godwin, Fournette, Cup, all good plays. That's pretty much it. Oh, Higby as well. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want either quarterback. All right. So, so some of the things I have, I have my, my targeted games for me are going to be Seattle, Arizona, the Chargers, Atlanta, Green Bay, Detroit, um, considering Buffalo New Jets, considering Miami, Chicago, considering Minnesota, just as a stack. Um, but those are my, my main things. Um, all these running backs look really good and they're all in a similar price range. So I think that you can definitely play the lower owned ones. Cause there's like, I mean, there's nine running backs that are like between six K and six and 6,600 that I think are really, really good plays. Um, and I don't think that one is necessarily that much better than the other. So I'll, I'll take a shot on Devante for Deontay Foreman. If nobody's going to play him, I'll take a shot. I'll play, I'll play Travis ATN as, as a priority, but right now it's, uh, everybody in that six K range is probably what I'm going to be doing at running back because you've got Mostert, you've got Fournette, you've got Mixon's a little bit more expensive actually than that. Um, but there's just a lot of guys in there, uh, Ramondre Stevenson, then you've got the, you know, take, taking a shot, maybe on Gibson or Robinson, I just think it's an easy week to spend spend down at running back um, in the five and six K range, and that's what I'm going to be doing this week. Uh, long I think with it's my- I think it's a good GPP week uh, because again I can't really identify one big team or one one or two big teams that'll dominate the the board. You know, right? Right. Um, you can you look you, you can make easy easy stacks right conceptually at least from Buffalo and from Cincinnati and 
You could even do it for Miami, right, with the easy Mooney run back and certainly Green Bay, Detroit. So, But the, the point is that not one – there's not one of them that just that looks like say Miami did last week, you know. Right. So it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. So so cue uh cue the uh, oh you know you know that the great, you know the way uh the way this all works right is that is that one week removed Ellinger comes and freaking breaks the slate. There, mm-hmm. you, go. Mm-hmm. there you have it in New England of all places. Yeah. In New England, exactly. At zero ownership and at and zero ownership, the, 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 the talk of the week. That's uh-huh. right. The naked Ellinger finally gets there. That'll he be didn't get a lot of help, by the way. I think Pittman no. had three drops or something like that. No. It, it was, no. those, were, those were bad. So um, anyway, it should be a fun one. We'll have more content coming up later this week. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, good luck to everybody this week. All right.